Welcome back, everybody. It's Tuesday. Ready for more calculations. We have our whole number and decimal addition first. Okay, so first I need to do an estimate. I have 66 and 5 tenths plus 139. My estimate, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to round this one up to 70. And I'm going to keep this one, I'm going to make that 140. Again, you could do something like you could even round this way up to 100 and have this one at 140 and end up with 240 knowing you went way up. Okay, for me, when I keep it this way, I know that basically I'm just looking at the tens. I already know that seven tens plus four tens gives me 11 tens or 110. Plus I already had my, my 100 here. So I'm gonna kind of do this, just reminding you place value, right? And let me write that over here, you know I'm visual. So if I do 70 plus 40, I know that I get 11 over here because I had my zero out and this is 11. Now I'm just gonna take this extra 100 over here Right, so I'm gonna get 210. So I know that this one should be probably somewhere around 210. Now remember, I rounded up for this and I kind of rounded up a little bit for that. So I know that it's gonna be above that, okay? All right, so let's write our actual problem. Okay, so when I write my actual problem, I'm gonna line them up. So the 139 did not, it was just a whole number. So I know my decimal comes after that. So I'm gonna write it this way and I bring my decimal down, okay? And I kept it this way because there's not a good reason that you have to flip flop it around. And um, that's a good idea to kind of get used to that, right? In addition, it doesn't matter for the order, but it does for subtraction. So let's just keep it so it's the same procedure, okay? So this goes on top, so I'm gonna do this over here. I start on the right, five plus zero is five. Six plus nine is 15, so I put my five, I carry my one. One plus six is seven, seven plus three is 10. Put my zero, carry my one. One plus one is two. So my final answer here is 205 and five tenths, which is pretty close to my estimate. Okay, so that makes sense. And remember the estimate is just to give us an idea if our answer makes sense. Okay, so my next problem, I have some whole number subtraction. Um, this one here, I'm going to, for my estimate, I'm gonna round this one to about 450, and I'm gonna round this one up to 400. And hopefully when you see it there, right, my hundreds are staying the same, it's just here in my tens. I had 50, I'm taking none of those away, so this should be around 50. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Now remember, I rounded this up and this one I rounded up. So not quite, but um, that's gonna give me an idea. Okay, if my number is so far away, then my answer doesn't really make sense. Okay, so I'm gonna write my problem. Remember, I'm lining up my place values. And then I'm gonna start, I'm gonna be on the right. Five minus eight, and I cannot do that, right? Because if I only have five, I can't take eight away. I would still owe somebody, so this would be negative. So I need to regroup. So I borrow, that becomes a three, this becomes 15. 15 minus eight is seven. Three minus nine, I cannot do that, right? Because three is smaller than nine, and I cannot reverse this order. I always go top to bottom. So this becomes a three, this is 13. Okay, and 13 minus 9 gives me 4. So my final answer is 47, and that's really close to 50. So my answer makes sense. Okay, so I'm on my problem with the fractions, right? So I have three twelves, and I'm gonna we're gonna just use our idea about like the close to one, close to half, close to zero. Okay, when we're doing our estimates for these, if I have three out of 12 pieces, I'm closer to zero. Right, technically I'm closer to um, one fourth, which it, this actually simplifies to one fourth, but that gives me an idea, right? So I'm less than one half. And then this one too, I'm less than one half. I know that because half of six is three and two is less than that. So I'm pretty close to that, um, kind of a little bit closer to a half. And over here, 
I was at um, half of 12 is six. And that's why I knew this was one fourth because three is also half of six. So this is kind of the same idea of like one fourth plus one half. Um, because this is closer. Notice if I'm looking this way, I'm closer to one half than I am closer to zero. So this is like zero plus one half. So I know I'm going to be closer to like one half or three fourths. Okay. But in order for me to do the math, I need to make sure that I have a common denominator, right? Remember when we're adding or subtracting, I need my pieces to be the same size. Um, this problem is really nice because 6 is a factor of 12. So I know that my denominator is going to be 12. So this needs to be 12. And I have to think, what did I multiply 6 by to get to 12? And I multiply that by 2. So whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top, right? And when I say that, I'm going to bring this down because this fraction stays the same since it was already 12. And then over here, I'm just going to multiply across the top. 2 times 2 gives me 4. Okay, so then I keep my 12, and I just add the numerator. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 is a prime number, and I cannot, so I know 1 and 7 are the factors, and I cannot do 7 times anything to equal 12. So there is my simplest form. And 7 twelfths, we said it's pretty close to half, right? Because 6 twelfths is a half. So when I did my estimate and said that I was closer to a half, um, my answer makes sense. Okay, on to my division. I have 406 and I'm splitting it between seven people or dividing into seven groups. Um, clearly, if I take a look here, I know that since it's in the hundreds, I know I'm going to have more than one group, right? Um, I know 7 times 10 would give me 700. So I know I'm not going to have my answer up here is not going to be um, 10, right? But this is not so far away. Okay, I need to go back. I'm so sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. So when I said 7 times 10, 7 times 10 is going to give me 70. So duh, we know we're going to have at least 10 groups. What I meant to say was 100 groups, right? What I meant to say was 100 because 7 times 100 would give me 700. And 406 is, is less than that. But I also know that half of 700 is 350. So I know I'm going to have at least 50 groups of 7. And I'm going to have a little more. So my answer here, I'm going to guess, is going to be at least 50. Okay, so let's do the actual division. Now remember, so um, the, the estimate just gives us an idea. Okay, so when I do my division, now let's put our steps. We have divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. And I did put in our classroom a multiplication chart. If you didn't have yours, that will help, right? Okay, so remember, I'm dividing by seven, so I'm going to look in sevens column every single time. Okay, if I have four items, I cannot make a group of seven. So I need to move over here and I'm looking at 40 items. So when I look at 40 items, I know I can make five groups of seven because when I look down seven's column, 35 is the number that gets me closest to 40. And when I find my 35, I move over and it's going to be five groups. Seven times five is 35. When I subtract this, I end up with five. And I know this number is less than 7, which I was dividing by. So this is the correct number of groups. Then my B stands for bring down. So I'm going to bring this down. When I have 56, 56 is a multiple of 7. So when I look in 7's column, I see 56. And when I move over to see that, I see it was 8 groups. 7 times 8 gives me 56. And I'm going to subtract. I get 0 left. So my answer here is 58. Okay. I hope you're doing well. Let me know if you have any questions.